Hello everyone, it's J.P. Murray with The Murray Company. I'm delighted to be with you here for today's webinar. You know what? If you follow kind of the stuff that we do and the content we deliver, you know that we do monthly webinars in addition to our podcasts and live videos. This one will be a little bit different. I'm going to talk to you about the total sales solution that we provide here at The Murray Company. So I, want to, I kind of want to give you a couple perspectives. One, if you've ever thought about um, outsourcing any of your sales operation, I'm going to tell you exactly about how it works and how we do it. So, gosh, if you take that as a little, there might be a little bit of salesmanship in there. That's, uh, that's the way it's going to go. But the second part of it is, if you have your own internal sales operation, I'm going to talk about some of this methodology that maybe help you to improve the performance of your own team. Quick background. And by the way, I'm recording it. This is going to be a 30-minute session. If you want to ask a question, I'm probably going to deal with those through email. There's a little uh, cartoon dialogue box there. If you want to submit a question, I'll make sure to follow up with you. I'm going to pack 30 minutes of content into this session and make sure it's recorded. Send it to you so you can pass along to your colleagues. Here's what we're all about. We started the company almost 10 years ago. Uh, we focused on selling memberships, sponsorships, exhibits, and ads for our organizations. We will make about a quarter of a million contacts doing that this year through our marketing campaigns and through direct calls. And, it, and those experiences have helped us learn about how to give advice to some of our friends about growing their associations. And we do it for a lot of different groups in different industries and in different professions across the country actually. So this is what the agenda is going to be about. I'm going to talk about some things that we're seeing in terms of what associations are looking for, how we go through the step-by-step -step methodology of selling for an association and the process, the real numbers and return on investment that some of our associations are getting by working with us. I'll talk about how it why it works and when it does, I'll talk about why it doesn't work some of the time, and maybe some of the objections are things that we hear the most from associations when they ask us questions about how to work with us. So here's what we've seen. Um, like I said before, when we opened our doors in 2010, we did one thing, and we sold membership for trade associations. And that evolved into sponsorships and exhibits and ads, and that still is about 70% of our business. But I can tell you, by doing that, it's grown into some other things and other programs and services that we've had to offer. And the second one is this area. Man, I'm telling you, it's an unbelievable trend, probably because of all the pressures that association business models are facing. We're doing a lot of work on um, membership dues, membership categories, looking at sponsorship pricing, developing new prospectuses for associations so they can sell more non-dues revenue. Here's why I think that's happening, because they know that we've been working with associations. They know that we have pricing comparisons across different industries. But most importantly, I think it's because they recognize that we've been out in the field and we make calls every day. So some of the thoughts that we have in recruiting and renewing uh, members may be valuable to them. We've also been involved in some strategic planning. Hey, we take, we take it from the perspective of we're, biz, we're business people first, and we'll develop a strategic plan for you that's based on organizational growth. And we've also talked with a number of associations like our friends at the Boiler Manufacturers to help launch their podcasts. We also log more than a quarter of a million records into Salesforce every year so we can help folks launch their Salesforce platform so they can sell a little bit better. And then I, I tell you one thing that I'm also seeing that's a little bit of a trend is where federations with their state chapters and their local chapters or their state organizations, they want to provide some assistance for them to recruit and sell, sell better. So we're running webinars and training chapters on how to recruit more members into the federation. And every once in a while, somebody gives me the opportunity to chat about those things in some keynote addresses and other things that we're doing. 
So let's break down how this thing works. So I would make this recommendation in this sales process that if I'm an association, even with my own internal team, that I would do this at least on an annual basis. So I'll walk you through the step by step. Hey, when we first get involved with an association, we build out some industry awareness. Or think about this if you brought on a new salesperson into your organization. The first thing we do is we have a launch meeting, and we go step by step the administrative procedures to join the association, including any incentive programs, including when invoices are sent and by whom, including things like, hey, if someone has would like to join but they need some type of a payment plan, how are you on that? If there are deals that can be made or incentives on sponsorship pricing, what would they be? We go through all those administrative processes, and then we build out some industry knowledge. Tell me about your industry and how it works. Tell me about how suppliers and manufacturers work together. Tell me about the supply chain. Tell me about the health of the industry. We do that for our entire sales team that's going to be involved with you. The next part is probably the most interesting to me over the years. Tell me about your value prop. Not, not the value prop that's on your brochure that nobody reads. Tell me about the value proposition about why people are joining and what specific solution are you offering them? What problems are you helping them solve? Or if it's a sponsorship, what business objectives will that sponsor achieve by being involved with your event? I want to know it in specifics. And this is where we get some of the most interesting feedback because, by the way, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take that information from you and turn that into our scripting and our talking points when we represent you out in the field. The other thing I want to ask is how are you different from the other associations that they can, jo that they can join? Hey, we deal a lot with uh, trade associations as an example. Here's what I'm going to hear over and over again, folks. Um, and we see it when we d deal with different prospect groups. You all have the same prospects. We're in an environment with mergers and acquisitions happening in industries. You don't think somebody else is calling them? So I want to know specifically how we are different from the other groups that they could join. Not to sell against them, not to demean their organization, but to establish what is unique about participating in your group. Then, so we've got that detail, we've got the information that we need about you, and then we move into building out an infrastructure. This must be in place. The process is so important, whether you're outsourcing or whether you're uh, doing this internally. We upload all the prospects into Salesforce, and I'll tell you about that in just a few moments, about how important that is. Based on our briefing, we'll develop talking points for email, voicemail, our phone appointments that we have, and then we start to develop the, the kind of the infrastructure to develop email campaigns to launch our program out into the field, and we establish some weekly reports of which I'll show you in just a moment. Once we've built out the infrastructure, that usually takes about a week, give or take. Um, we then go into sales. We launch an initial campaign, usually by email, we're watching who opens and clicks onto that email campaign, and those are the people that we call first because we want to avoid at all costs cold calling people that don't care. It's a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time, and it's a waste of your money. And then we'll also absolutely be the point of contact where we will respond to every inbound request. We will qualify people for membership and sponsorships. We want to be the integrated salesperson into your organization. And the ones that treat us that way are the ones that are most successful. And then on a, usually, even though it's not in the contract, our team is contacting our point of contact within the association on a weekly basis talking about what's going on how it's going, what we're hearing out in the field. That's the process. I talk to you about Salesforce. Every single week, every single week a member of this team will send you, a, a, and this is a partial report, an activity report. Here's everything that we did on, on your behalf, with whom, what the type of call was, 
any kind of comments. You can get a, a sense of the cadence and the rhythm. You're also going to receive a pipeline report that says specifically who we think, here's the last time we contacted them, this is when we think it'll close, here's the likelihood at this point, and here's how much money it's worth. These are dummy reports, but man, these are automated and they go out to you every Friday afternoon. Now, so your question might be, okay, let's get into some of the details, right? Well, how long does it take us to close a deal? And this is something that you can, that you can benchmark with your own organization. Oh, by the way, you might not even know. CEOs out there, this is something you ought to be able to get from your sales team. We're closing about 70% of the, spot, of the opportunities that get into our pipeline. Once they start talking to us, we're closing about, 20, uh, about 70% of those. It takes us 90, about 90 days to close a sale, and again, most of our work is with trade associations, and about 40 days on a sponsorship, much more time to find, so we can close them quicker. What do the metrics look like? What's the return on investment appear to be? Well, here's, man, I think this is something every association executive ought to be thinking about. The value of when you bring them in the first time is tremendous. So just to tell you a little bit about our business model, it works on a, we have a retainer plus commission basis. So in general, on an annual basis, you're going to pay, uh, it's about 40% of the new revenue that comes in, give or take. That's a ballpark between that commission and retainer. But here's what the first year looks like on average. About $100,000 plus is coming in for the association and we're going to get paid you know, about 40% of that. And then what you see in year two, uh, based on the renewal program that you have in place, that on average is bringing in about 88% of that, you add those that we brought in plus the new members that we bring in again, your, your actual return and net because of this membership growth is going to be somewhere around $180,000 based on a quarter of a million that's coming in. And year three is when it really starts to tip over. You're making almost, uh, what is it, almost a little bit north of $300,000 a year and keeping almost uh, 270000 of it. So every year that we're involved with you, it starts to tip over and you get more and more value because you're focused on retention, we're focused on bringing in new money. Tremendous return on investment in my view. Now, how do sponsorships work? About the, the model's about the same. Now, I'm going to go give you a specific example here. Organization, this isn't complex for crying out loud. This is sponsorship revenue with a sponsorship program, pretty small association, pretty small program. Before we came involved, they were making about 60 k on their sponsorship. I think of this was an individual meeting. We worked the deal for about a year. Next year comes in, they're getting 184 grand. And oh, by the way, I know the guy that did it. And I also know there wasn't a lot of expansion in terms of new leads that they were giving us. We were working their existing supplier list in that program, and man, we grew it out that year. A big-time deal here. And what ended up, ends up happening is, in this case, the association is clearing about 152 of that, and they're paying us about 30 grand. Awesome ROI. For us, you've got to evaluate that for yourself. And so a lot of the things that people ask us about, well, yeah, but we just want you to focus on new, new sponsors. I'm talking about sponsorship. Well, here's what we're starting to see. We bring in about 60% of all the sponsorship sales that we bring in as new money. That, that might be a, a, an existing sponsor that upgrades and increases or a brand new sponsor that comes in the door. And the renewal, the, the amount of renewal money that we bring in is about 40%. Here's a takeaway, friends. I would, I would make this point. One of the things that we see is the new money that comes in is, if, you, if you're diligent about this, is a renewal that upgrades. And you've got to have somebody. This is the value of going back to that existing sponsor and talking to them about the program that's in place and should they go to the next level or try something new with us. Don't just assume, and the other thing that we're finding, don't assume that they're going to renew. In fact, what we see 
based on our Salesforce activity is it takes almost as long and as many activities to close a renewal as it is to bring in somebody new. Why is that? Well, it's probably because they thought the coffee was cold during their coffee break sponsorship or they didn't like where their logo placement is. So we got to go through all that with them again. Point matter. Point here is new money is new money. And I think if you focus on renewals, you can get some of that that may be easier to get that you might not be aware of because you're trying to chase down people that aren't interested in you and getting them to sponsor. How does this compare with your own employee? Again, this is something you've got to decide, but we were interested in data, so we started pulling it up. And I don't know, there are other outsourcing outfits that may have different models, but basically, when we compare with fundraising positions and ad sales and membership sales reps, you see from ASAE what those numbers are in terms of annual compensation. And then you see about what the average is that a client pays us on an annual basis. Pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. Then we go into, but that's not all. Here's the point. The point here is I want to make sure that you know that when you're working with a good outsource firm, it's a total sales solution. It isn't just a call center. You're not giving phone numbers to some kid and just call on the list. So here's what we're going to bring to the table or groups like us, right? Dedicated director that's focused, that works on your account. You've got access to people that are working on association strategy all the time. That's kind of me some of the time. You get the ability to do some research and list building in your organization. I tell you what, we're finding companies that the association didn't have on their prospect list. We can build that out now better than ever before. We've got a list verification system for your emails so we can tell you what's bouncing, if it's bad before we ever send it out so you're not a spammer and never and neither are we. We'll give that information back to you so you're going to have a better email list than ever before. And we've got the state-of-the-art email marketing system in Pardot that is connected to our Salesforce and, oh, by the way, a certified Salesforce team. That's if you add up all the stuff that I'm paying for in this case, it's about it's almost 13 grand. And we've done that at scale so we can make it competitive for you to think about if you en engage an outsourced team like ours. But it's not just like I said, here's the list, go call it. That's not what we're offering. We're offering a total system here that you can plug into your organization in an integrated way. So here's some example. Man, I'm I'm really excited about it, about this part because I want to tell you it works a lot of the time. Sometimes it doesn't, and I just want to tell you about my experiences there. And hopefully it, there's some takeaway. Hey, I asked my team the other day. We had this conversation. What makes a great partner? And I can tell you, if you don't have a good list, it's really hard to get out of the gate. Now, what does that mean? Well company with multiple contacts segmentation we're starting to get much more narrow and niche with our communications and our sales pitches right so it's it, i think one of the one of the challenges that associations have is they treat their membership let's say it's manufacturing all as one group but there are it's either small, medium, or large. They want different things from you. Specialties within the industry. Make sure you segment. That makes our pitch much more targeted, and we're more successful with companies or associations that have that kind of list. The other thing that I see is they value a new member from wherever they come from. Let me tell you, it is more difficult than ever before to land a new member. So don't turn your nose up at the supplier that's coming in because you never know. By the way, remember that one, two, and three-year performance because if you take care of them, they're going to pay over and over again to you, and they also may sponsor. So the association that appreciates that value, and they, they actually appreciate the value of renewals, they're willing to let us connect with some of their technical and their issue specialists, 
and they also are really clear. They have good data on why companies and people join their organizations or why people sponsor. That enables us to articulate the value proposition better. The companies that bring these bullets to the table are ones, by the way, I'm not pitching to you today, but if you're doing that, I want to talk to you. If you're thinking about membership, sponsorships, or whatever it is, business development in the right way. Here's why it doesn't work. Oh, man, I dropped in a picture of our Indy car there. Big red M at the Indy 500. So let me tell you about why it doesn't work. It doesn't work if the association has the perspective of, hey, you know what? Give them this list of people and let them break their pick on it. We're not a call center. We don't call people during dinner. Um, and we don't like to be treated that way. And the better we can integrate and collaborate with you, the better it is. The other thing that I see is, or it's a red flag, hey, you know what? We're going to handle this 15 or 20 because you can't do that. You can't handle these. These these relationships are too in, important for us in the membership side for you to call these folks. The fact of the matter is, if they were so important and you were so good at it, weren't they members already? <laughs> so my point of view is, if you're not, go ahead and let us take care of all of it. Let, it, let, it, let your sales team go after whoever's available. And there's a membership culture that's missing in some organizations. And what's, what's the proxy for that? Well, let me tell you. They don't onboard their new members well once we get them. They're slow to approve their membership application. They have too many barriers to join, too many approval. When I start to see that, I start to go, man, they don't appreciate bringing in a new one because they, they put all these roadblocks up in place for them to join. And that is a, that's a red flag in terms of their membership culture. And then I'll say one other thing. A thing that doesn't work is that they've got totally unclear <laughs> expectations. And I know it's probably a very, well, very well-meaning uh, board member that will say, you know what, gang? We only brought in five new members next year, but my imperative as the chairman of the board is that we're going to bring in 5,000 new members next year, and the association goes, oh, my gosh, we better give that to somebody to do because we can't. When that, those unrealistic expectations are placed, <laughs> it becomes a challenge for you and for me. And the other one, though, the other one, though, I think is relevant. I want to mention this real quick. There are companies out there, they may be even in your industry, and they may be a big player, and they are not a fit for you. I'm seeing this a lot where associations have these, uh, this list of ought to be's. But the fact of the matter is they're getting those services, that lobbying expertise, that regulatory affairs specialization from another association, and they're not going to leave it. Be really, really confident about your value proposition and whether it's a fit for them first. You may want them more than they need you, and the recognition of that is something that's very healthy. Here are some questions that we get and some objections. I'll be totally candid with you here in the last, what do we have, like five minutes or so. You don't know the industry is something we'll hear a lot. I, there's no doubt about that. You know more about the widget industry than I do, and your members are going to know more than your members know more than you do, probably. But my experience is that's not that isn't the reason why a, a prospect is reluctant to join. The reason why they don't join is because there's not consistent follow up, and that's what we do, and that's what a good sales team should do. And as a result, the association doesn't really know the prospect. And over time, if you're making this outbound type of work, you'll start to know the prospect, which I will argue is actually more important than knowing all the industry in, uh, uh, different idiosyncrasies, right? We learn over time about the industry. You ought to talk to our, our, our colleague that's been working in the, uh, in the paint and coatings industry. Believe me, he knows more about air quality than, than he would have ever imagined now. So we do learn over time, and we actually go do site visits with some of our, with some of our clients now to see their members in action so we can learn more about them. We know associations and membership, and that's what you're looking for. You don't need another association industry. You don't need another industry expert. You need an association person. 
We hear a lot about this too. Oh my gosh, did I skip one? Yeah, you don't know, you don't have the relationships. Well, yeah, I know, but you don't either. They're not a member yet. The real relationships, and and frankly, you, in my view, you will be a better association if you're building relationships with the members that you have onboarding them, engaging them, making sure they're participating in the key components of the institution. That's the most important job for you. Let us deal with establishing and building out the on-ramp of bringing them on as a member, and then you start that membership relationship. It's amazing to me how many organizations are concerned about an industry relationship that they have with a non-member. I don't get that. Or I yet to understand it. And I want you to improve your engagement with your existing members. And that's why I think it's valuable to bring us in. To, to, or, and to have your membership recruitment team bring people in. Because they're not a member yet. Develop that relationship with your members. Let me give you just a final thought. Um, I hope this was helpful to you if you are a association that has your existing sales team or might be thinking about an outsource program. This is probably as candid as I've ever been about our business model in public. I do that a lot with individual associations, but I really wanted to give you the lay of the land of what outsource sales and marketing operations might look like. If you would ever want to connect with us, we've got this platform through our Facebook and our YouTube, our blogs, our LinkedIn page, our podcast. We're talking about membership, sponsorship, organization growth all the time, and we also have a new book out. If you'd ever like to engage on any of these platforms, I would be absolutely delighted to do so, or we would also be more than happy to tell you more about this. Hey, on behalf of the entire Murray Company team, thanks for your time. Oh, my gosh, it was so valuable. Hold on a second. I got a question. Oh, thank you very much. Just some kudos. Hey, thanks for listening in and spending your valuable time with me. We'd be delighted to work together, or I'd be delighted to give you more advice in the future. On behalf of the Murray Company, thank you. I'm J.P. Murray. Bye-bye.